Are you loving it? Yeah, you know I'm loving it. Loving it. Are you loving it? Yeah, you know I'm loving it. Some, some, some it. of you love it and you can't get enough of it. Then put the hand up high right where the other is. Are you loving it? Yeah, you know I'm loving it. Are you loving it? Yeah, you know you're loving it. Some of you love it and you can't get enough of it. Then put the hand up high right where the other is. Are you loving it? Yeah, you know I'm loving it. Are you loving it? Yeah, you know you're loving it. And if you're loving it, you can't get enough of it. So put a hand up. Hey, this is Reese from the medical school, and today we're going to tackle x-rays. We're going to determine how to figure out what is a technically good x-ray. Because before you can actually read an x-ray, you need to have to know if the x-ray you're reading was appropriately taken and does not need to be repeated again. So let's start off with the factors that determine a good x-ray. One is penetration. Penetration is how overexposed or underexposed an x-ray is. It's very important because if an x-ray is underexposed or overexposed, it can lead you to errors in your diagnosis. The way to determine penetration, to look at the spine sign, is can you see the spine through the cardiac silhouette? In the first x-ray, you can. In the second x-ray, it's very difficult to see. And I actually think that second x-ray is a little underpenetrated. So what is underpenetration? Underpenetration is when you have too much light in the x-ray. And the reason why it's important to identify x-rays that are underpenetrated is that it can lead to prominent pulmonary markings. And though a patient may have a normal x-ray, if it's underpenetrated, this can let you think that these prominent pulmonary markings are due to either pulmonary fibrosis or heart failure. At the same time, there's x-rays can be overpenetrated or appear too dark. When they are too dark, a lot of the features of the x-ray get drowned out. For example, the pulmonary markings are not as prominent in an overpenetrated x-ray. This may lead you to think that a patient may have a pneumothorax when it could be a completely normal x-ray. That's why it's important to understand penetration and be able to figure out which x-rays are underpenetrated, overpenetrated, or just right. The second feature that you're going to look at an x-ray and determine if it is good quality is inspiration. When an x-ray is taken, a patient is asked to take a deep breath in to make sure that you have a good picture of the entire lung field. You should see 8 to 10 posterior ribs. The posterior ribs are the most prominent ribs you see and that are kind of horizontal in nature and make like an upside down or an upside down U. So in this case, you make sure you need to count that first rib, then the second rib, and then count all the way down. In this case, we have an adequate number of ribs. In a non-hospitalized patient, you'll be able to see 10 ribs. Hospitalized patients, more like 8 to 9 ribs. The reason why this is important is that poor inspiration can lead to crowding the lung markings, and you may think you have a lower lobe pneumonia when actually you don't. The next important factor to evaluate an x-ray is rotation. A lot of times your patients in the ICU or in the hospital, they may be too sick to sit in the proper position. So you need to determine if a patient's rotated on an x-ray or not, because it throws off the anatomy of the x-ray. So use the clavicle heads as a determinant of whether they're rotated. You identify where the spine is located, and you, you identify where the medial portions of the clavicle heads are located. Whichever clavicle head the thoracic spine is closest to, then that means the patient is rotated to that side. So if the, pa if the patient's right clavicle head is closest to the spine, then the patient is rotated to the right side. And this, again, this is really important because this will throw off the anatomy, it'll throw off the size of the heart, it'll throw off a lot of the features of the x-ray if you are unable to determine the patient's rotation. So here we have an x-ray that is rotated. If you look at where the thoracic spine is and identify the clavicle heads, the one on our left is actually the right patient's right clavicle head. And you'll notice that the thoracic spine is closest to the right clavicle head. So the patient is rotated or turned to his or her 
right side. The next factor that is important to determine an adequate x-ray is magnification. And usually this isn't too big of a problem in the hospital, but it's important to know the difference between anterior posterior and posterior anterior x-rays. A lot of times when patients are in hospital beds, they'll be getting anterior posterior x-rays. What the AP versus PA determines is where the source of the x-ray is coming from. So let's imagine a patient's body. I'm just going to draw a little square here. I'm going to place the patient's heart in there, labeled by H. And I'm going to label the patient's front on the left, patient's back is on the right. And we're going to take an AP view, an anterior posterior view, meaning the x-ray waves are coming from the anterior portion, hitting detector on the patient's back. So if you have an x-ray source, an anterior view, Whenever these x-rays shoot out, they shoot out in a straight line. When they hit an image, the image blocks the x-rays and the detector on the other side records these blockages as light or white on the film. So if a image is close to the source, there will be magnification. So in this case, the heart is close to the front. So when the waves hit it, there's magnification when it hits the detector on the back. So actually, the film that you get in AP view, the heart is actually slightly larger than the actual size of the chest. Now let's look at the PA view. The PA view is a little different because when you usually get a PA view, the detector is flush against the patient's front, and two, the source is also source of the X-ray is also flush against the patient's back. So here I'm going to redraw the patient's body. I'm going to place the heart back in that front area again, and we're going to place our source towards the patient's back and our detector towards the patient's front. And again, we're going to illustrate the waves coming at the heart and see how much magnification there actually is. So we place the source, and we, then we draw out the x-rays. And you'll notice that when the x-rays hit the heart and then the detector, there is some slight magnification for the PA view, but it's not nearly as much magnification as during the AP view. That's really important to know when you're comparing x-rays, that they should be from both the either all AP or all PA. And if they're not, you need to take that in consideration when you are trying to diagnose a patient based on two different x-rays. So understand the source of an x-ray is really important in determining the way certain organs will appear on that x-ray. Now, we've gone over kind of all the factors that determine a good x-ray from penetration, inspiration, rotation, and magnification. Let's take an example and try to see if it's a good x-ray. So let's start with penetration. We're going to look for our spine sign. Um, can we see the spine through the the cardiac silhouette and yeah I believe we can. You have a very nice spine sign here. Then next we're going to look for inspiration. Can we see eight to ten ribs? Yeah, I count our first, count our second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, uh, eighth, ninth, tenth, oh no, it was eleventh. So we got at least you know eight at least at least ten ribs present. So it's a very good inspiration. Is the patient rotated? Well, you identify the clavicle heads, then you identify the thoracic or the spine. And you notice that the patient doesn't appear minimally rotated, but very little rotation, if any. So very good. So I, I would say this is a pretty good x-ray. And this is what you should be looking for in all your x-rays before you actually determine if there are any diseases present. If you like this video and you like the brief summary, Give this video a like, comment, and subscribe. There are more videos to come, so stay tuned. This is Reese from the Medical School.